and to be in a community who are not afraid to say we must abolish war. So thank you all for being part of that community and being the visionaries that see us um, ending the 21st century, having abolished war, and having built the alternative energy infrastructure with the resources that we're now putting into destruction. So thank you all for knowing that and being part of this community. So as we do every year, we will begin our, um, our experience today at the Peace Fair with a reading of the Sadako story. Al Miller and Reva Short have blessed us every year and will continue to do so. Come. This story is based on the real life of a little girl living in Japan from 1943 to 1955. She was in Hiroshima when the United States Air Force dropped the atomic bomb on the city in an attempt to end World War II. Her courage in facing radiation sickness has made her a heroine to children in Japan and all over the world. Here is the story of Sadako. Sadako was born to be a runner. Her mother had always said that Sadako could run before she tried to walk. One August morning in 1954, Sadako ran outside into the street as soon as she was dressed. There was not a cloud in the sky. It was a good sign. And Sadako was always on the lookout for good luck signs. Sadako ran back into the house and poked her sleeping brother. Get up, lazy bones, it's peace day. She skipped to her little sister's bed quilt and whispered, Cotton candy, fireworks, get up, get up. Sadako stood beside her sleepy little brother and hopped from one foot to the other excitedly. Get up, it's peace day. I can hardly wait to go to the carnival. Sadako's mother spoke up from the kitchen. You must not call it a carnival. You are 11 years old and you should know better. Every August 6th is a memorial day. We remember those who died when the bomb was dropped on our city. You must show respect. Your own grandmother was killed that awful day. Oh, I do. I pray for her spirit every morning. Sadako's father gathered the family together and he prayed that the spirits of their ancestors were peaceful and happy. He gave thanks for his barber shop and his five <clears throat> fine children. He prayed that his family would be protected from the atom bomb disease called leukemia. Many still died from the sickness even though it had been nine years since the bomb was dropped. It had filled the air with a kind of poison called radiation that stayed inside people for a long time. After prayers and breakfast and cleanup and chores, Sadako stood impatiently by the door waiting for her family. She spied a fuzzy spider across the room. This was a sign of good luck. She carefully cupped her hands and carried it outside and set it free. Her big brother watched her and jeered. That's just plain silly. Spiders can't bring good luck. Sadako just skipped and hopped, gaily chanting, You just wait and see, you just wait and see. Finally, Sadako's family set out. Sadako ran ahead to the house of her best friend. They had been best friends since kindergarten. Come on, let's hurry so we don't miss anything. Don't be such a turtle. Why walk when you can run? The two girls raced down the street, but at the entrance to the Peace Park, People filed through the memorial building in silence. Sadako did not look at the walls lined with photographs of the dead and dying. They frightened her. She whispered to her friend. I remember it, the thunderbolt. There was a flash of a million suns. The heat pricked my eyes like needles. I was little, but I remember. After the speeches at the close of the ceremonies, Hundreds of white doves were released from their cages. They circled and twisted and flew into the freedom of the sky. Sadako liked to think that they were the spirits of the dead finding peace and happiness. The day passed quickly. There was cotton candy to eat. And crickets to catch. And good food to smell. And fireworks to enjoy. At the end of the evening, the whole crowd carried paper lanterns to the banks of the river. 
A candle was lit in each one, and each bore the name of a relative who had died when the bomb was dropped. They launched the lanterns on the river and watched them float out to sea like a swarm of fireflies against the dark water. Sadako lay awake in bed that night, remembering her wonderful day and thinking about that fuzzy spider and the cloudless sky and all the good luck signs. Summer turned to autumn and school started again. One day after classes, she bounded into the kitchen to see her mother. Guess what? I've been chosen to be part of the relay team for my class. Just think, if I win, I might get on the track team next year at the junior high. From that day on, Sadako thought only of the race. She practiced every day, and even her big brother was impressed when he saw how fast she was. At last, the big day arrived. There was quite a crowd gathered to watch the relay race. Sadako looked at her father. I'm nervous. Just do your best. We'll be proud of you. The race started. When it was her turn, Sadako ran with all the strength she had. When the race was over, her heart still thumped against her ribs. Then she felt a little strange and very dizzy. Your team won, her family shouted. She shook her head and the dizziness went away. Sadako practiced hard all winter. Sometimes after a long run, the dizziness would return. Then it got worse and wouldn't go away at all. She was frightened and didn't tell anyone about it, not even her best friend. On New Year's Eve, she wished for the dizzy spells to stop, and she started to feel a little stronger. Then one cool, crisp winter morning, Sadako was running in the schoolyard when she suddenly fell down. She tried to stand up, but her legs felt all wobbly, and she fell down again. Sadako's brother ran to the barber shop to tell father. Father took her to the Red Cross hospital. A nurse x-rayed her chest and took a little of her blood for testing. The doctor asked a lot of questions while he tapped her back. Three other doctors came in to look at her. One of them gently stroked her hair. Soon her whole family was with her at the hospital. They listened to the quiet murmur of the doctor and their parents talking. Sadako heard her mother cry out, Leukemia, no, that's impossible. Sadako covered her ears with her hands. She didn't want to hear any more. Of course she didn't have leukemia. The nurse helped her into bed, and her family gathered around her to say good night. Her mother promised to visit her every day, and her brothers and sister promised too. The doctors want to keep you here a few weeks. Do I really have the atom bomb disease? The doctors just want to run some tests. That's all. Sadako just wanted to go home. A lump of fear was growing in her stomach, for she knew that some people went into this particular hospital and never came out again. The next morning, Sadako woke up in the hospital feeling lonely and miserable until her best friend burst into the room. Close your eyes and stick out your hands. She filled Sadako's hands with pieces of paper and a pair of scissors. All right, open your eyes. I figured out a way for you to get well. Do you remember the old story about the crane that's supposed to have lived for a thousand years? If a sick person folds 1,000 paper cranes, the gods will grant her wish and make her healthy again. It's a strong sign of good luck. She cut a piece of gold paper into a large square. She folded it over and over again until it became a shimmering golden crane. Here is your first one. Sadako knew it was a good luck charm when she touched the paper bird and a funny feeling came over her. Her eyes filled with tears and she whispered, I'll keep it always. With her best friend's help, Sadako folded ten cranes. It wasn't easy, and they weren't perfect, but she felt safe and lucky with them lined up on the table beside the golden crane. When her big brother came to visit in the afternoon, he suggested hanging them from the ceiling to show them off. Do you promise to hang every crane I make? I promise. Good. 
only 989 to go. A thousand? Are you kidding? When Sadako told him the story of the cranes, he grinned and left the room to borrow thread and tack. He hung the ten new birds, but left the golden crane in its place of honor on her table. Her family was surprised to see the flock when they came in to visit. Sadako's mother was reminded of an old poem. Out of colored paper, cranes come flying into our house. It was lonely in her room when her family left. Sadako folded more, tra more cranes to keep her courage up. With the completion of each bird, she made a wish. I wish I get better. During the next few months, Sadako had good days and bad days. Everyone saved paper for her, and each night her fingers folded paper cranes. As her flock grew to 300, she began to realize that she really did have the atom bomb disease. Over time, the leukemia stole Sadako's energy. Sometimes her head hurt too much to read. She had many dizzy spells, and sometimes it felt like her bones were on fire. On bad days, she just sat and held the golden crane in her lap. On good days, she carefully folded paper cranes and made her wish. There, 465, I wish I'd get better. Early summer came with its endless rain. Sadako, Sadako grew pale and listless. Her mother worried that she wasn't eating enough. enough. Her flock grew. 541, I wish I'd get better. When Sadako was too tired to make any more, she closed her eyes. Her mother remembered a poem and whispered it to her in the darkness. Oh, flock of heavenly cranes, cover my child with your wings. Come July, the sun returned and Sadako felt a little, a little better. She started to eat again and she left the hospital for a visit home. She was too excited to sleep and spent the night folding cranes. Happily sighing, she counted 622. For several days, she enjoyed seeing a steady stream of friends and relatives. But by week's end, Sadako felt very tired and looked pale. The next morning, she returned to the hospital. Nearly every day, she needed shots or blood transfusions. Sadako was afraid of dying, so she kept on fighting the sickness. The golden crane helped. It reminded her to have hope. But soon it was time for her family to visit her for the very last time. They brought a big box wrapped in gold paper. With a red ribbon. Inside was a beautiful silk kimono patterned with cherry blossoms. Her mother had stayed up very late sewing it for her. With great effort, Sadako got out of bed and slipped on the kimono. Her mother fixed the sash for her. She sat in a chair by the window, and they all agreed that she looked like a princess. That is just what her best friend thought when she came to visit. They all laughed together, played word games, and sang all Sadako's favorite songs. When it was time to leave, everyone looked almost cheerful. Before she went to sleep, Sadako managed to fold one more paper crane. 644. It was the last one she ever made. The next time she woke up, she saw her family all around her. She smiled because she knew she was part of this warm, loving circle and that nothing could ever change that. Light began to dance behind her eyes. Her trembling fingers touched the golden crane. Sadako looked up at the flock above her. As she watched, a light breeze from the open window made the birds rustle and sway as if they were alive and flying. How beautiful and free they are, she thought, as she closed her eyes. Sadako never woke up. 
She died on October 25th, 1955. Her classmates folded 356 more paper birds so that Sadako could be buried with a thousand cranes. Fifty years later, her spirit lives on in our hearts. Every peace day, August 6th, thousands of paper cranes are folded and placed beneath a statue in Hiroshima's Peace Park. In each bird resides the same wish. The statue is a likeness of Sadako, standing on top of a granite mountain in paradise. She holds a golden crane in her outstretched hands. The wish, this, this is, is our cry, cry. This, this is, is our, our prayer, prayer. Peace, peace in the, the world. world. Together three times. Peace in the world, peace in the world, peace in the world. Thank you, Alan Reba. It's deeply moving. It always is.